Welcome, lovely evening. This is Scorecard on City TV. A dramatic day of a Premier League season is drawn to a close. We have new champions for the Premier League. Man City, they have done it for the fourth time in five years for Pep Guardiola. And we'll look back on how the entire drama unfolded in what has been an incredible 38 season, uh, 38 game season. Also, uh, elsewhere, AC Milan are champions of Italy for the first time in 11 years. How have they done it? There's that also to, uh, to come. Ares Bakan pipped uh, a certain Orlando Paris uh, to the CAF Confed Cup uh, final. Champions again in the second tier competition of the Confederation of African Football. How have they done it? Well, <laughs> two Ghanaians were involved for Orlando Paris. wasn't to be for them. In the Ghana Premier League, Kotoko are losing grounds. Five matches now. Kotoka have just one win. They've lost three of them, and suddenly they look like they're panicking towards the end of the season. What's going on with the Porcupine Warriors? All of that to come, plus your messages. And we have a special show for you tonight because we also have Scorecard Premier League Awards. So, Coach Christopher Nimley and Daniel Cranton have been putting together who they believe has been the best player, the best coach, the flop of the season, their goal of the season, their match of the season. All of that still to come. So it's a really packed show here uh, on Scorecard today. It's live and interactive on social media. Send me a message. Let me know what you make of the last day. Um, quite a lot were yet to be decided before the end of the season. On the last day, the Premier League title, that was decided. Top four places, that was decided. And then there was even time for Europa League places and even relegation places. All of that. So let me hear from you what you make of what has been an incredibly busy last day of Premier League action. This is Scorecard. Leave me a message. Use the hashtag Scorecard on Twitter. Hashtag Scorecard on Twitter. I'll retweet them, those messages. Uh, share as many of them with our viewers as possible. You can also send me a WhatsApp message. We'll take a very short break as we like to do all things. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest. And we have a very, very special show for you tonight. So sit tight. Get ready. Buckle up. It's going to be a long ride. This is Scorecard on City TV. My name is Fentio Tahir Fentio. Tonight I'm here with my usual crew, Coach Christopher Nimley, physician by day, tactical magician by night, Raf Rannick, uh, prodigy by, uh, by afternoon as well. Uh, <laughs> you, you're trying to create so many problems for yourself. But Coach, on a more serious note, what at all has Rannick added to the United team since he came? That no. question will be answered later. Uh -huh. that, wait, you actually have an answer. Ah, when well, we are going to do the show. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. When we get there, I'll answer. Don't worry. It's a, it's a straightforward thing. Okay, make it short for me. Don't be in a rush. <laughs> See, when you do that, <laughs> you turn out become Pipi Ankuma. Do you know Pipi Ankuma? No. <laughs> you know Pipi Ankuma? <laughs> Daniel, how are you? I'm fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, guys, it's been a dramatic last oh, day, man. Oh, boy. Tenter hooks. You know tenter hooks? <laughs> Look. Everybody was sitting on tenter This hooks. was even more dramatic than the one Man United, Man City won. Yeah. yeah. The Aguero season. Yeah. The Agu this, this was. Look, with 15 minutes to go. 75 minutes. Villa led 2 0. 2 0. Liverpool, all they needed to do was to score. score. City and had to score funny, three no? times. Wow. I thought. The cup that was, was going to Anfield, to be wow. honest with you. All right. So, like we said, it's been a dramatic uh, season of Premier League action. Here is the story so far. I'm not crying. You are. You are. You are. Wow. Tell me you're not emotional after seeing that. Brilliantly done. Uh, Sky Sports coach, I can see that you're very... Yeah, man. We are going to miss this for the next one. <laughs> Three months, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Goodness me. What a way to... Yeah to relax ourselves what a way to enjoy what we do what a way to feel happy yeah that every weekend there's something like this to look up to we've enjoyed every bit of it to be yeah. honest with you the euphoria the, the 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 shocks that went through the spines of almost everybody the disappointment the look it's been absolute it's been absolutely fantastic and for me Deserved this winner. man on the screen mm -hmm. has completely written a Premier League history. 
I don't remember any manager winning this league four out of five of the five seasons that he spent in the league. He's won it four times. Not he spent even, six seasons. He spent how many seasons? Six, six seasons. seasons. So only Chelsea, the first season. Yeah, and, and then, then Liverpool, Liverpool has stood has in his way. Yeah. And uh, not even the great Sir Alice Ferguson could do that. It took Fergie close to six years yeah. to start winning the uh, 13 trophies that he won. But to be honest with you, look, we've enjoyed every bit. We thank Liverpool for making this a competition because at some point in time, they were about... 12, is it 12 or 14 points? 15. Of, 15 points of the pace. And for them to have crawled themselves back into contention. We say we are most grateful to Jorgen Club. We've touted this league to be the best league in the world in terms of skill, in terms of flair, in terms of technique, speed, power, tactical uh, uh, know-how. Know -how. Everything was on display throughout the season. And for me, the likes of Patrick Vieira, somebody... Nobody, Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe, of course. Nobody thought he would come in there. Jesse Marsh has come in and saved Leeds. As, there you go. And two kill. Thomas gave us how many incredible games against Liverpool? I think two. No, four. four. Overall. Overall, four. Every single one cracking. Very cracking. And for me, uh, 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 it can only get better, isn't it? Because, look, I know for sure my, you, Manchester United will be better next season. Chelsea will be better next season. Liverpool would not want to see... Oh, they were enlarged their squad. It's yes. Basically, that's the Pep Guardiola lifting this thing five times in six... No, it's not going to happen. Four times in... Oh, no. So, we can only look at this to get us to understand what to expect next season. And I, and I can say for sure, it's going to get better and better. No two ways about that. Daniel? It's going to get better. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> When the final whistle went, I just remembered the conversation I had with Coach at the start of the season where we were talking about how this season will be won. I said, if you if we're not getting 90 points, you will not win. You will not win it, yeah. And then he said he wasn't too sure, sure that, that we'll get to 90. Win. Yeah. But this is a new standard. Yeah. It's, it's it has to be 90. Pep class. and Klopp have taken the standard to the Premier League, standard of the Premier League to the next level. If you're not getting 90 points, you can't compete for the title. And that has been the... The, the, the story in the past five seasons. If you look at the winning margin or the winning points of the teams that have, have, have claimed the trophy, it's 90 points and above. This one was 93. Last season, uh, Manchester City were in the 90s. You go back to the season before um, Liverpool getting 99 points, then Man City 98, then Manchester City 100. That is the new standard. Even second was getting 97. Even second was getting 97. So it just shows you how you must improve if you are going to, to, to win the title. And um, this goes to the Chelsea's, the Tottenham Hotspurs, the Man United's, the Arsenal's. Um, if you want to compete for the title, then you have to start looking at 85, 90 points. And these are teams who have um, 58, between 58 and 70 points. So it's a lot of work you need to do. But look, that is why the Premier League is a Premier League. And what I love about this league is there's always a story somewhere. There's always something to fight for somewhere. Yes, maybe the title race might be between two teams. Then you look at the top four race. It's still going on. Relegation uh, battle is still going. Even Europa and Conference League places are, are always a fight. And it just shows you how the quality gap is, is, is being bridged. You look at the likes of, of West Ham, of Wolves, who narrowly missed out on, on European um, um, places. You look at Leicester City, who made it um, two, two years in a row. This time they missed out. You look at Newcastle and how all of a sudden from January they've risen from the bottom up to a mid-table place. It just shows you that if you... And if West you are not, Ham had Europa League yeah, for how many minutes? For how many and, and then, then they, slipped they let away. it slip. It just shows, look, it doesn't really matter what the name of your team is. If you are doing your things right, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. And that is, that is the Premier League. And it's just, it's just marvellous to watch. Yeah. Today's, um, today's games were just... It just showcased what exactly the Premier League was about. It's drama, it's exciting from start to finish, and um, the team that deserved the one at the end of the day. So contra uh, congrats to Manchester City. Uh, we'll show you that game in a bit, but first let me show you the scores uh, from today's Premier League matches. Dramatic day, really. And we'll tell you what every single score there meant for every single team. Uh, Manchester United lost to Crystal Palace by one goal to nil. Now, this defeat would have kicked United out of Europa League places, because at the time... Uh, Crystal Palace scored. <laughs> West Ham had also scored against Brighton. And you see it there. 
But then eventually they lost that game by three goals to one. And Man United defeat became inconsequential. So now United ended up finishing in the Europa League places in set position. Chelsea won 2-1 against Watford. Chelsea led for the majority of the match. Then Watford head back and it almost looked like Chelsea were going to drop points yet again at home this season. But Ross Barkley, a man that's been aligned for so long this season, hadn't played much, came off the bench, gave Chelsea all three points. And it was a very good uh, exit. And the final goodbye for Antonio Rudiger. Burnley. Now, going into the last day, Burnley and Leeds United were competing for who drops and who stays up. Burnley were playing at home to Newcastle, so a lot of people gave them a chance because Leeds United were going away from home. And look at the team they were going to, Brentford, who had been really good this season. Now, Burnley somehow lost at home by two goals to one, and Leeds United ended up winning their game by two goals to one. Leeds stayed up, and Burnley got relegated. Uh, Brighton. They beat West Ham, as I indicated. That denied West Ham a place in Europa League next season. Liverpool 2-1 against Wolves. For a longest period, uh, Liverpool were drawing. Because Wolves scored first, Liverpool hit back. And then when Man City were 2-0 down, Liverpool were still drawing 1-1. So even at that point, Man City could have lost that game and still won the league title. But Man City, you see the, the bottom, they turned it around. They scored three goals in five minutes to beat Aston Villa by three goals to two. At that point, Liverpool also uh, turned the tables. In fact, uh, and then they won um, there as well, comfortably. Salah scored there. And then Norwich City lost at home to Spurs. Now, in that game, Spurs, and that's the drama we were talking about, Son Heung-min was chasing the, 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 the top scorer's award. He had 21 goals. Salah had 22 goals. <laughs> then Son scores twice. It goes up to 23. Then Salah comes on as a substitute, scores the winner, and then goes level to 23. So it was a lot to determine in this game. At the point Salah, Son had scored the 23, had scored the breeze, Salah was still on the bench. Yes. It's unbelievable what happened on the last day. Leicester beat Southampton 4 1, inconsequential result. Arsenal uh, showed their fans a bit of. Well, a very good end to the season. They won by five goals to one comfortably. And yet again, Mikel Arteta showing that everywhere he missed Frank Lampard, he'll give it to him, what the, what the, what the, <laughs> basically. And then the City game, we see it there. Um, this is what the table looks like now uh, at the end of the season. So there you go. That's what Daniel and Coach were talking about. If you don't get 90 plus points, forget it. You're not winning the league title. 93 points. For Manchester City champions. Liverpool, 92. Chelsea, 74. Tottenham Hotspur, 71. And those four will play in the Champions League. So Arsenal, that's why they are heavy win today. No Champions League for them. However, they can console themselves with Europa League football. They and Man United will play in the Europa League. United, at some point, looked like they were going to play in the Conference League. And then somehow lost the game. Still ended up in the Europa League. Thanks to Brighton beating West Ham. That result means West Ham now end up in seventh, which means they go to Europe, UEFA's third tier inter club competition, which is the UEFA Conference League. That is basically all of that, as far as those playing in Europe are concerned. The rest of them you see there, and then you see the bottom three. Leeds just escaping on the last day. Burnley, Watford, Norwich. Bye bye. Burnley, for the first time in five years, are going back to the championship. And we say bye-bye to Norwich City, who spent just one season back up. And then there's Watford, uh, of course, as well. So there's that. All right, we can now show you that Man City 3-2 victory against Aston Villa. Just watch how all of the drama unfolded. Yep, that's how they did it. Had to come from behind, showed the stuff that champions are made of. Uh, there were individual awards as well. Um, and we'll get to that in a bit. But Coach, brief yeah. thoughts on the character they showed in this particular game. As they come back from two goals down to win the title the way they did on the last day with nerfs all over them, high-flying, everybody... Oh, God. Yeah. I'm not a City fan, but you see, I was um, nervous. Maybe it was designed to happen this way. But Pep Guardiola, again, in my view, nearly cost his team. The selection he put out there wasn't the best. You have had me a half time. Yeah, especially the one he asked to go and play at right back. 
and the one he had partnering Laporte in yeah. center back. Zizenko has been brilliant since the Kawaka injury situation started. As to why Pep decided to bench Zizenko, which in my view could have been Concello on the right, Zizenko on it the left. It was an easy choice. It was something, it was yeah, so John direct. John Stones and Emmerich Laporte, it's, it's, it's actually so common sense. I don't know whether because um, Fernandinho, this happens to be his very last game and he's been a very faithful servant to Pep. He wanted to please the young man. But look, if you look at what was at stake, there was no way Fernandinho should have started this game. And you could clearly see that Villa, all their dangerous players... Only what? Just targeted him? Just targeted him and then they were... Because, you see, John Stones is not a right back. He's not a solid right back. Yeah. He hasn't got the pace and the ability to play as a right back. Uh -huh. But again, like every good manager will do, he did it. He realized it wasn't working. Just at the start of the second half, he brought back the balance. And then unfortunately for them, they considered the second goal. Afterwards, that was where the character came in. Look, if you looked at the facial expression of Kevin De Bruyne, Pep Guardiola himself, the tactical switch, introducing Gundahan, taking off Ram Maris, bringing on him Sterling. That was bold was... change because yeah. at the time, Maris you was could clearly like see a that very dangerous player. they needed to score three goals, but he needed Aston Villa to think differently. Because up to that stage, whatever Mares and, 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 and Co were throwing at them, they were very comfortable in defense. They looked very solid. So once he brought on Gundahan, we've all known Gundahan for how good a player he is in midfield, but he's got the extra ability to score goals. He's a very good goal scorer. He, it was one yeah. season like that, he was almost a top scorer. Exactly. Last season. Last season, yeah. The, yeah. When Kevin really De Bruyne had this, yeah. this yeah. funny injury situation, he stepped up. And for me, he reminds me of Frank Lampard. Yeah. During the days of Frank Lampard. Those he, late runs oh into my the box. The blind side of the defenders and then being there at the right time. And look at what he did. Look at the header. That Raheem Sterling. Look, he needed to pick his spot technically Players are told to head the ball back to where it came from. Mm -hmm. But he knew that there was a player in front of him. If he had tried doing that, it would have deflected off the player. So he just picked the narrowest of spot and hit it very hard with his head. Bang! Into the back of the net. That was all the over 45,000 supporters were yearning for. Something to get them involved in yeah. the game. Because as yeah. at that time, they were so very of tense course. and not having anything to rejoice about. But the moment... The players responded in that manner. Look at the euphoria. Look at the atmosphere. Yeah. And players feed off that energy. Yeah. Goodness me. Yeah. And look at, you see, the winning goal, actually. Forget about the Jinchenko dribble that gave the ball to Rodri. But look at the winning goal. Did you see how Kevin De Bruyne pounced on the loose ball? Mm -hmm. The desire, the drive. He went straight into the box. Tempting the Villa players to tackle. To tackle. But they didn't. And of course, very typical of him. Whipped it that across. final ball is always delicious. And all Gunnar had to do was to just tap it in for me. Because even if Edvander had touched that ball, on goal. On goal. <laughs> exactly. Because the ball was placed in the That's why you described tantalizing. Exactly. Exactly. And for me, look, um, 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 it would have been a massive disappointment if Man yeah. City, for the good football, quality football they have shown to us this season, for them to have gone the whole season without a silverware. Football would have been so, so, so unfair to them. To them. They yeah. were so unfortunate to miss out on the Champions League final, in my view. They were so, let's say, in the two, I mean, let's say they were tired of winning the Carabao Cup. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Because they have won it for the yeah. past four seasons. Yeah. They were tired won of winning. Won it every year they've won the league. <laughs> exactly. So, look, it had to be them. But like I said earlier on, we say congratulations to Jorgen Klopp and his boys. For making this a competition. Season. All right, let's go through some of the individual awards, uh, beginning with the Golden Boot. That was shared. So both Son and Mohamed Salah scored 23 goals. So as a result, that award was shared between the two of them. 23 goals apiece. Um, brilliant, Daniel. Absolutely brilliant. And the fact that <laughs> it happened um, on the last day. The last and you see, day. people are talking about Son, but. It's, it's Salah that just interests me. Look, I bet you he had heard what had happened at Carrow Road. Yeah, he had given Jogging <laughs> Club the eye. He said, boss, take me on now. Put me on that pitch. <laughs> it's time. We are not winning it's the league. Time. The man is taking the body. If you look at his body language and the way he celebrated that. Yes, yes. Knowing that Manchester City was also leading 3-2 at the time. 
He wasn't celebrating because Liverpool had won the no, league. Okay, fine, we've lost of the title. Course. But I've got my goal king chart back. Exactly. And you see, Salah, he's, he, he gives these interviews. And at the start of the season, he spoke about giving himself personal targets. Yeah. And the goal king is always one of them. He, yeah. he wants to get his hands on the trophy. So for him to suffer that injury last week, um, there was a risk of him missing yeah. this game. He couldn't play from the start. Sitting on the bench, hearing that Tottenham have scored. And okay, who is the scorer? It's not Son. He's calm. Two, Tottenham has scored. Who is the scorer? Son. When it was 4-5, his son, he was like, nah, Klopp, it's <laughs> time. Put me in there. He comes in and instantly he gets the goal. That's, that just shows you the class of the player. Uh, He's a yeah. top, top class player. Brilliant. That wasn't the only award that was shared on the day. Uh, the, the Golden Glove Award, the award given to the best goalkeeper, the goalkeeper with the most clean sheet, was also shared between Edessing and Alisson, two Brazilians. Both kept 20 clean sheets apiece. All right, so uh, congrats to them, the two Brazilians. One is number one and the other is number two. Brazil are really blessed. Uh, one last individual award was given, and this was the Assist King or the Playmaker Award. And that ultimately went to Mohamed Salah, who provided the most assists this season. All right, Assist King, wonderful stop. 13 uh, for him. Um, in fact, Robertson also had 10 assists this season. Rhys James also had nine assists this season. Um, we'll talk about Rhys James and Trent Alexander-Arnold in a bit, but it's time now to take our first break. When we come back, Scorecard will give his own Premier League awards. Welcome back. This is Scorecard on City TV. My name is Fentio Tahiru Fentio. Uh, the Premier League season has come to a close. Uh, lots of awards has been given from the Premier League themselves. Uh, here at City TV, we'll give up our own I was as well. Some of you have also been sending in messages, like I said, on WhatsApp and on Twitter. Your messages are left there using the hashtag scorecard. You can also send me a message using the WhatsApp number on your screen. Um, somebody says, hi comrades, what at all is La Liga chief drinking or smoking? They feed on individual players while Premier League rely on management, Rain Hatsaki, for that message. And I'm sure that message is in relation to the fact that Kylian Mbappe has decided he's staying at Paris and Jamar uh, instead of moving to Real Madrid after Paris offered him an awful lot of money. Uh, some people say as much as £2 million a week, £100 million signing on fee, concessions on possibly who becomes manager, has a say on who the club signs. In fact, they say he's already had a say on Leonardo leaving as the club sporting director. It's absolutely ridiculous stuff. But bottom line, he's staying. And Real Madrid are not happy. In fact, the whole La Liga are not happy. Javier Tabas, the La Liga president, released a statement that they were reporting PSG uh, to UEFA because they can't think, they can't think far <laughs> about that deal. Um, let me read some more messages. This one says, congrats to Man City and AC Milan. So United is the only team that did not score a goal in the last day of the Premier League action. They scored 58 goals and considered 58 goals. Can Coach say something about it? That's from Victor Odru in Asim Fosu. Well, if you're looking for another team that didn't score on the last day, you're looking at Norwich City. They took a pummeling at the hands of Spurs. It was 5-0, so they didn't also score. But yeah, United are the other team that didn't score. Um, best from Nigeria says, so it's, is it over for... Uh, Man United's problems? Um, no, they are not far from it. Thank you. This one says, uh, the goals Man U uh, scored with their so-called... Okay, the goals Man United scored with their so-called well good <laughs> were all in vanity. <laughs> uh, ben Singh in my movie said, Congrats to Man City. We United fans are happy that Liverpool couldn't win the title. As for next season, Man United is bouncing back. This one says, very unfortunate for Man United from title hopef hopefuls to Europa League battling. But all the same, very happy seeing Man City win the EPL title ahead of Liverpool and also Norwich, Burnley and Watford getting relegated. This one says, Daniel predicted eighth position or less for Arsenal before the season started. Arsenal is fifth now and he came to give us a lecture on what Ateta did or didn't do. Ask Danny K what changed. He should apologize to Arsenal fans. <laughs> As an Arsenal fan, I think January cost us, but we still finished ahead of what Danny K predicted. Samuel, oh boy. Heshi. Danny K is not a god. If he predicted <laughs> eight and you finished seventh, uh, fifth, why should he apologize? I'm sure um, he started supporting know. Arsenal recently. Yeah, yeah. Sure well. Uh, this one says, hi, friend. It's a big shame to all the 19 teams for allowing, 
was allowing, <laughs> allowing City to win the league without a striker. I think Klopp should sign Harry Kane as a response to City signing Haaland and make next season interesting. That's Roland Gambero in a shaman. Uh, this one says, I'm very disappointed in United's team, if not Brighton, who saved us from Conference League, like we're going to play that league. <laughs> my greetings <laughs> goes to my love, Jessica Saki, in South Central Region in Elmina. Jessica, your husband or your love, uh, says, uh, kind regards to you. All right, um, Coach and Daniel, we've been, you guys have been putting a, a beautiful list together on various categories on who you think has had a great season or who you think has had a really bad season and we've got that and I'm gonna go through your list and the players that you've chosen and then you tell me why you think that player um, is the best player in the league or any other award for that matter yeah. and that's where we start best player of the league uh, this season in the Premier League so there you go uh, for best player, so we'll go through all the categories. Match of the season, best new player, best manager, best goal, and flop of the season. And for best player of the season, uh, Coach, yeah. you go. Your yeah. pick is? My, my pick is Cristiano Ronaldo. You see, I, uh, I don't know how you want to look at it, but in my view, this Manchester United team is so bad a team. It's so bad a team to the extent that the focal point of every team is the midfield. And if you have a player of this caliber playing in the midfield where the two guys who are supposed to get on the ball and orchestrate, initiate, put in the passes and help the team create were completely fruitless, non-existent. Even in the absence of that, he scored 18 goals in the league. And most of his goals were proper goals. When I say proper goals, goals that eventually determine the outcome of my United season. You take Cristiano Ronaldo out of this team. You take Cristiano Ronaldo out of this team. His goals out of this team. My United will virtually be battling relegation. So in my view, if you put Cristiano Ronaldo again in the championship winning team of Man City, he scores a minimum of 35 goals. <laughs> You're serious? He scores a minimum of 35 goals. Because on the planet Earth, as we speak today, nobody, no player, knows how to put the ball in the net better than he does. So for you, and the for me, whole Premier League... The whole Premier League... Ronaldo has been the best player last year. He plays season. for the West top six or top seven team. And for him to have scored 18 goals... And the manner in which he went about his business mm -hmm. tells us that in if he was view, in a better team, if he was in a better team, he scores 35 plus. Daniel, you've Son, gone with Son Heung-min. Yeah, Son Heung-min. And for me, it wasn't. It was a no-brainer for me. Look, um, from where Tottenham started off this season, um, it, you see, and his form it, it actually is a progression from last season into this season. And you look at, I always say that the most important part of the season is the second half of the season, crunch time in the season, where that defined seasons. Son stood up for Tottenham Hotspur. 14 goals in the second half of the season, eventually finishing as a joint top scorer with 23 goals. And this is a team that has Harry Kane in it. He, he, he took initiative. He took the mantle on himself and he, he literally dragged Tottenham Hotspur down this, um, through into, into fourth place, of course, clinching it on the last day. If you look at um, the battle that they faced, where Tottenham Hotspur came from. And I keep on mentioning that. There was a point where they were 11th. They climbed to 9th. It was a steady climb. And Son was the one at the end of it. If you look at the most important games at the crucial time of the season, he was the one grabbing the goals. The hat-trick against Aston Villa. The goal at Anfield. Um, um, yes, a, a, against Liverpool. He scored against Arsenal. Very important goals. And of course, today again, he uh, summed it off with a brace. For me, mm. Son was not just his goals, but the performances also. In terms of assist overall uh, performances, Son for me was, was player of the season. All right. So that, that's uh, Daniel Spicks on him. It's worth noting that the Premier League voted for Kevin De Bruyne as the player of the season. So none of, uh, none of the guys in the studio thinks that he has been the best player of the season. All right. Let's move on to the next award category. And we're looking at match of the season. Uh, coach, uh, you've gone for Liverpool 2, Man City 2. This is the game at 
Anfield, at not Anfield. the one at the Etihad. No, not the one at the Etihad. That one also ended 2 2. Yes, it was a day. one, look, the one at Anfield. Mm. Uh, look. What made it so special? Goodness me. Everything about it the intensity, the technique, the quality of the coaching, the quality of the football, the quality of the goals. Yeah. Goodness me. No wonder I picked Mohamed Saleh's goal, his second goal in that uh, game, to be the goal in my view of the season. Look, anybody who watched this game, mm -hmm. if only we could go back to this game, anybody who watched this game, it was completely end-to-end -end stuff. And the quality of football we saw on that day was, is beyond measure. Nobody can put any instrument through this and measure its quality. It was simply fantastic. And this was one of the games where look at that. you could clearly see, look at this, look at this. You see, if you've got a player... This is the biggest believe, stage. This is when it matters most. You've got your big game players rising up to the occasion and making it a beautiful occasion. And for me, this game, in my view, was mm. by far All right. the most entertaining, the most beautiful, and the best game of the season. Daniel, you've gone for another game involving Liverpool. Mm -hmm. By this time, another two-all draw at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. What um, makes that game so special? First of all, this game was played on my birthday. Mm. The best game any neutral can witness in the league. It was end-to-end -end stuff. And you see, I, 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 yes, both of them ended 2-2. Two -two. Both of them were end-to-end -end stuff. But what separates this one from the Man City game? I felt the Man City game, it was a combination of bad defending. I and, mean, this and, kind of defending. Yeah. <laughs> But look, in this game, it was, look, this game was top, top class quality stuff. There were world-class saves. There were world-class goals. There, there, there was everything there was, in it. There was, there was, there was a comeback. Defending. Yes, there was a comeback. <laughs> a team going up two goals. A team coming back from, from um, two goals down. Was, look, it had everything. And, and, and for me, another thing that also stood out for me was the fact that the big players in each team stood up in this, in, in this game. There was Mendy <laughs> making killer saves. There was Salah scoring a fantastic goal. That was the goal that the Kovacic, uh, um, the, the game the Kovacic, um, yeah, came in. You look at Kante's performance in this game, running the midfield. Look, it, it had everything for me, and for me, this is this is by far, this is by far the, the best game of the season for me. And you know what's interesting about this game is the fact that all four goals were scored in the first, the first half. half. You know, it almost looked like Liverpool were running away. They suddenly, Chelsea were back in it, and but this goal, the equalising goal from Pulisic, actually started from a Rudy guy interception. And in the and Man City. Liverpool game to all go was scoring in the second half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All four came in the second half. Incredible. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, absolutely brilliant stuff. Let's go to the next award. Um, and we're looking at... What are we looking at this time around? Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, there you go. Thank you. Best new player. Best new player. Coach is going for a player that only came in in January. Yes. Transfer window. Which is curious because... If a player who came in in the summer is your overall best player of the season, how is he not your best new player? No. Oh. The reason why he's, Cristiano Ronaldo wasn't my best new player, he knows the league. Mm. This is not his first time in this league. He's been here before. He knows exactly what to expect. He knows how to adjust. How many times have you seen a January signing take the league by storm? Okay. How many times? It hardly happens. Mm. I don't. Re I can't remember any of them. Maybe Look, Papi Cc, Papi Cc, but his influence wasn't as big as this guy. The Evra, the village that became a household name of this league. I mean, Luis Suarez was also a January sign. No, but, but he didn't. Take he, it. He, he didn't sparkle from the word go. But this young man, Devil Luis was. No, come on, man. Forget about Devil Luis. <laughs> I'm talking about Luis Diaz. Look, this young man, everything he did. Everything he touched completely was world class. He transformed Liverpool. At a time where Liverpool were missing two of their most important players yeah. at the AFCON, he walks into the team and he got every Liverpool supporter to forget about them. And he look, his all-round contribution for a January signing, I don't think any new signing could match up to Luis Diaz. And look, and all things being equal, I expect that next week Saturday or coming Saturday, he will crown his performance as my, in my view, the best new signing of the season okay. in that Champions League final against Real Madrid. 
Daniel, I, I guess it goes without saying that for you, if Ronaldo is extremely spec for, <laughs> for a simple, player of the season. It's as simple as that. Automatically. Um, best new signing, 37 yeah. years old, walks into, um, as Coach said, in which is factual, the, the worst top six team, mm. um, the toughest league in the world, and he scores 18 goals in less appearances than the only two guys who scored more than him. And he could easily have been 23 or 24. That's how good he was. Scoring hat-tricks, in, at important goals, important hat-tricks, big goals. That is Cristiano Ronaldo. And for me, look, I, that's why I like to look at individual awards as individual awards. If you try and summon the whole team, you could easily get very mistaken. And I think that's what the Premier League have done. They've looked at the best team in the, in the league and then they go for the best player in the best team <laughs> in the league. And it's, that's a bit simplistic. I think individual performances, when you look at the, the, the sum of what the player has done in that season and you take it out of what their team yeah. has achieved and you see a huge hole in, 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 in that team, that's, that's Cristiano Ronaldo. When you take his contribution out of Man United, Man United did not win a single game that Cristiano Ronaldo didn't start. That's how important he was um, for them. And yeah. as a 37-year-old coming into the league, I think it's a no-brainer. Best signing of the season for me. Great. Uh, I don't know about you watching at home as well, who you think has been your best new player. So let me know. Use the hashtag scorecard or also send me a message using the WhatsApp number. All the hours indeed. Let me know who you think is your pick for every single one of those awards. The next category is best new manager. Uh, who's been the best new manager? Coach Nimbley thinks Patrick Vieira has been brilliant from Crystal Palace. Uh, his coming has had a really good season. Forget the spelling of Vieira there. There's an I missing. Um, <laughs> the first R should be an I. And then that's that. But Daniel thinks it's Eddie Howe. Nimbley, quickly. Yeah. Uh, Look, on Vieira. When he was coming, okay, he was coming to take over from... I thought Palace would be relegated. Let me just put it out there. <laughs> That's what we all thought. <laughs> and I remember I sat on this show and I said, Look, I've never followed Vieira throughout his thing. I think he, he coached a little bit in France. He got fired. He got fired. And he started from New York. Yeah. And then he got fired. So we were all very curious. Especially, don't forget, he wasn't Palace's what? Choice. First choice. Yeah. They had been turned down by two so he was more or less their third or fourth choice yeah. and then they accepted him to come and coach the team the football he got them to play to get them to completely switched from the Roy Hoxson way of doing things typical English football typical too. English and get them to be dead, very free flowing free flowing mm. very creative very combative believing in young players young talent I think, look, he must be given every credit. Like you said, we all thought Palace would be relegated yeah. at, the, at the start of the season. But he made them a very, very tough opposition. I think they were, He's made them his team, basically. They were one of the teams that went to the Etihad yeah. and caused problems. They took four points from them. From, from Man City. They, they took four points off Man City. I mean, that, that was a very fair pick, in my opinion, as well. But Daniel, you also have a really good, good, good manager in contention for manage, new best new manager. And, and that's a really strong shout, Eddie Howe. Look, um, this is our, 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 our debate coach. Look, yes, <laughs> Vieira was brilliant. Nah, I mean, Eddie Howe is a good pick. So. Vieira yeah, was brilliant. Of course, he's a Vieira good started pick. the season. Vieira had a preseason. In fact, just, just before you go, I was torn between the two of them. Yeah. Let me be very I honest. Mean, that's I was fair. torn that's between fair. the two that's of them. That's fair. Vieira, for me, Vieira had a, a, a preseason. He started with the team. And he, yes, he's put his imprint on the team. Fine. If you look at what they did last season as compared to this season, in terms of league position, it's not necessarily... It's almost the same thing. It's just a style of football that changed. So you can't really say he's improved them. Maybe he's improved... Um, the, the, well, he's increased the amount of neutrals that watch their game because it's much more interesting. But look at Eddie Howe. This team was done. Newcastle, were, they were gone. Yeah, they He were came dead. into the team. They hadn't won a single Premier League game before he came. Wow. He was done and dusted. In fact, I, 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 they tweeted something today, how it started versus how it's going, and with the, the, yeah, yeah, the pun Eddie Howe's name. After 11 games, they had drawn once. They had lost all 10. It was, look, they were done. He came in, and he has not just turned around results. He's also turned around the style of play. He's been able to imprint that Eddie Howe style of play that yeah. we all saw at Bournemouth. Interesting, brilliant. Possession-based. Yeah, Possession-based, attacking, fluid football, creating chances. And he's had big wins. They have the best, in fact, I think it's after Liverpool, the best home record this year in the second half yeah, of the season. In 2022. That's since he came. Look, 
I've not seen in my life, I've not seen a managerial change like this, especially when it comes to a second half of the season. The contrast from Newcastle in the first half and the second half is a completely different team. Newcastle finished 11th, and they were just two points from finishing in the top half. That is crazy, considering yeah. what they were or where they were when he came. We all thought, in fact, a lot of people thought that the Arabs were wasting their money yeah. because they were going down for sure. Look, and you see, the interesting thing also is that he didn't... That um, criticism, unfair criticism about the Arabs, it's not their fault they have money. But when they come in, it's like they are going to spend billions, trillions. No. Their he signings bought, were very yeah, strategic. Very strategic. Yeah. He bought key players. And if you look at the, the influence of uh, Bruno, you look at the influence of Trippier, you look at Chris Wood, these guys have come in big. They brought the change. Yes, and you can tell it's a manager who knew exactly what the team wanted. In that limited period of time, and he got the results right. at the end of the day. It's, just, it's massive. For me, his best new manager, his best manager, this is probably the best managerial performance in the last five years. If, for me, yeah. honestly, this yeah, is I mean, it's huge. What he did was that is hard to debate. Fantastic. That is hard to debate. So, Eddie Howe and Patrick Vieira getting uh, good shots from the guys in here. What about you? Who's been your manager of the season? Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, maybe, Thomas Tuchel, Miguel Arteta. We went from <coughs> eighth to fifth. I mean, that's. An achievement. They were out of Europe. He's brought them back to Europe. So, yeah, big achievement. Um, what about your goal of the season? A lot of fantastic goals have been scored so far this season. Uh, what's been your goal of the season? I've asked Coach and Daniel. Coach is going for Mohamed Salah versus Man City. We showed you that, that goal a little earlier. We'll bring it back again, Coach. And you just talked me through it and what makes it so special. Look, at the time, Liverpool had just considered, um, I think, they had just scored mm. to make it 2-1. Okay. At the time, it was 1-1. One, one. And so the next goal was very important. And if you look at where he picked up the ball from, the number of play City players in and around him, he had about four City players in and around him. Yeah. So he stood no chance of putting that ball in the back of the net. Mm -hmm. He went past the first one. He went past the second one, the third one. And then I thought that after doing that, there you go, he's gone past the first, the second, there you go, the third, and then, look, the fact that he could believe in his weaker foot yeah. from that angle to do the sort of things he did and technically have the execution ability, the skill, and the know-how. Because the keeper virtually had come in, stepped out, and had closed the gap. And then, yeah. look, to squeeze it in from that angle is in really difficult. Angle, in such a very big game, I think by far, by far, by so, far. I, I must say, I admire Daniel's pick. We'll get to it in a bit. I, I admire his pick, yeah. but I think S Salah had a lot more to do yeah. than okay. the Kovacic one. So if one had a lot to do with uh, skill, the next one has all, everything to do with technique. Daniel, Kovacic versus Fence. Liverpool. Fence, this is a next level goal. There's, a drop volley in itself is difficult. A to drop volley <laughs> going back retreating is extra difficult. You see, when the ball is coming from the top and you are standing there, you are waiting for it to drop, that is extremely difficult. And we've seen goals of the season. In fact, Puskas award given that for goals like that. But look at him. He's going back. He's going back. He has to time the ball perfectly. And he did it. Look, how is this goal not goal of the season? This is the goal of the year. No, this is the Puskas no, This is hard. And see, and, like, and, this and, is, no, you, see, see, you know, you know what I'm saying. You, you see, you can't keep, you see, you keep see, this down. The thing is, is that mm -hmm. after Salah scored this goal, the following week he did exactly the same thing against Watford. Mm. Okay. We've seen Salah do it um, two seasons ago. Maybe that is and why the Puskas scored. Even on the right that's hand why, side, that's two, why you don't see it to be the most difficult of goals. But look, you see, in terms of anybody at all can execute that cover because there's only one thing to do. I'm coming. I'm coming. That's how to keep that. I'm coming. I didn't take credit from the no, Salah one. No, so I'm, I'm just saying credit, that. Just let but him. we are comparing the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we are comparing the you, two. You, you, you justified said, your pick. No. Let him justify and his I'm pick and then that, we move on. And I'm you don't that, have to discredit him. No, I'm not discrediting this. I'm saying that if you look at the two goals, uh, Kovacic had one, one thing in mind to volley the ball. Mm -hmm. It was the execution that he had to get right. But in the case of Mohamed Salah, he had four or five players in and around him. Yeah, there is no... This is not about whose pick is better. I understand. <laughs> so I, understand. Not, I understand. We're just talking about the difficulty no. level yeah, of, both. of both. Like you explained. Both. I'm saying, yeah. look, difficulty level. We 
all look, we all know technically, technically, the volley is probably the most difficult thing to execute. But I'm saying to execute a volley whilst backtracking with your eye on the ball in the air and you decision are backtracking. Already made. For, yes, your decision is made. Already made. You see, this, but it's about execution. Salah, so whether you can get He's your, your back, left there at the right yeah, time, at the right time, time. But the hit the Salah, target for the keeper not to get one, the ball. Two, three, I remember four, watching this. Bang. I remember <laughs> watching this. I think who was it? There was a. I think it was Thierry Henry, who spoke about the fact that with this ball, 99 percent of the time, 99 out of 100. You can't get out on target. Yeah, in the case of Salah, over two million players, <laughs> only two will execute that. <laughs> right. Only two will execute that right. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to the final bit of award, and this one is not so fanciful. We're looking at who's been your flop of the season. And it looks like two very obvious picks from the two guys. Uh, who's, been, <laughs> who's been your flop of the season? Uh, Coach Christopher Nimli has decided that <laughs> size 50. Coach, <laughs> no, but there is, is uh, not there's no surprise there. No, but if it is not my who is the vlog? <laughs> <laughs> Viewers watching this show, <laughs> you saw him today when he's controlling the boy. Eh? <laughs> then, <laughs> The second defender control ball like that. That's how he moves the ball, actually. Is that no, that, no. Uh, yeah, that's actually how he moves the ball. What is that? What is that? What is that? Oh, Charlie, my God. Zuku, the size 50. Did you see him? Look, when he's running, when he moves the leg, the whole thing, 50, bam, get up to here, then bam, up to there. Ah. Look, no wonder. United scored 58 goals and considered <laughs> what? 58 goals. Hey, Coach, somebody says zero is what? What's the, 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 the mathematical name to describe zero? He has no negative sign, has no positive sign. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Magua, yeah. he is by far the flop of the season. Yeah. By far the flop of the season. Uh, we <laughs> have some Magua highlights as well. Yeah, if only you could put some there other. You go. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this <laughs> this clearly shows how bad badly he controls ball. Let's go back and see him see him controlling the ball. Like I said, and then look at him. Look, look, oh, man, look. Boy. He just came crash his own player. <laughs> <laughs> he just came and crash his own player. Look at him. <laughs> he just came and instead of him to focus on the Burnley yeah, player, yeah. he came and he look. He's pushing his player away from the ball. All right, this man, Daniel. <laughs> Your flop of the season is wow. Romelu Lukaku. <laughs> Look, it's Lukaku. No, at least Maguire was featured in the starting eleven. At least, yeah. At least Maguire was playing week in, week out, and was he had the ability to flop. Lukaku even lost his position. Lukaku lost his position, and this was a hundred million euro player who was sitting on the bench. Look, he was so bad to the point that Tuko didn't need him anymore. He was just on the bench, and you see. If you look at the big games in this season, even when Chelsea needed attacking reinforcement, he was usually the last player they called on. He was that non-existent. And he only got his run of the, run, a, 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 a long run of games in the team when Kai Havertz got ill this past couple of weeks. He came on, he scored. But even today on the last day, he dropped back <laughs> to the bench. Look, Lukaku, was, he's been very disappointing, honestly. He's been extremely disappointing. The sort of impact that we all thought... And that's, that's how I'm looking at it. The sort of impact of that course, we all against thought, the yes, price tag. And against the price tag. A team that had won the Champions League. It's familiar a team with that the was league as well. Simple. A team that was begging for a finisher, a recognized finisher. You come in with this pedigree. You finish with 20-plus um, goals in back-to-back -back Serie A seasons. You walk into this Chelsea team. And after six weeks, you can't even make the starting lineup. Yeah. Look, it was, it was, you see, the Lukaku thing, a terrible, it's, terrible it's not even like he wasn't getting the chances. You can actually have a compilation of Lukaku missing cities at Chelsea. Everything. So it wasn't always the case of they didn't play to his strength. He missed a lot of Maza, really good Maza, chances. Maza, 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 Maza. But that's they didn't play to his strength. Uh, we'll take another break you here don't need to on Scorecard. For you to miss uh, the 60 yard When we come so. back, we'll play some highlights for you from today's Premier League matches. And then take you to Italy as well to show you how AC Milan won their first title in 11 years. I'll come back. This is Scorecard on City TV. Let me take a couple of messages and then we show you some highlights from uh, elsewhere. A lot of you have been sending in your messages as well on Twitter. I'll read those tweets uh, in a bit. But let me take a couple more messages from WhatsApp. 
Uh, this one says, I want, <laughs> after that, I want penalty. I switched to City versus Liverpool game and never came back. Um, I agree perfectly with coach. Okay. All right. I think that's a, um, that's a bit of an old message. This one says, congrats to Man City and AC Milan for winning their league title. Hmm. This season, United scored 57 goals, conceded 57 goals. Wish my club Chelsea to come back strong next season. That's Philip. Uh, I make a two inside Kleko uh, Agbozume in K2 South. This one says, my best new player is Luis Diaz. He was fantastic in the Liverpool team. Muda from Medina. It says, my manager of the season is Eddie Howe. He's fantastic. And Kovacic is the best goal of the season. Uh, this one says, Bruno is a flop. He's just so poor the whole season. I wonder why no coach is able to bench him. Look at what he did today. Assist is a hard to score. He's talking about Bruno Fernandes. It's good evening to you guys. I'm Leo from Tardy. Uh, best player, Son. Best match, Chelsea versus Liverpool. And best new signing, CR7. Best manager, Eddie Howe. Best goal, Kovacic versus Liverpool. And flop of the season, Harry Maguire. Uh, and then he also says, my flop of the season, in fact, is Rav Rannick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one says, please answer me this one. The ball fell you caught in the... Scorecard adverse, you know, was it played by coach? I love this team, wow. That's from Tracy inside, <laughs> wow. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I love this coach of yours. What? His analysis are uh, the best. Good evening, Fentu, as usual. Great show. Bentley will be playing in the Premiership next season. No, in the Championship next season. Uh, um, oh, okay. You say Bentley will be playing in the Premiership next season. Had this been in Ghana? You would have had four Newcastle players scoring five own goals against themselves. Reason why we love the Premier League. Uh, my name is Cornelius from Wager. General SYFR says, Oh my, it was a delight watching the EPL. When are we going to have our league develop? God, please have mercy upon Ghana and Africa as a whole. <laughs> That's an interesting prayer. Um, I'll read the tweets in a bit. But let's take you to Anfield and show you how it unfolded there. They won all right. Um, but they didn't win the title, but they got all three points. All right, so Liverpool winning comfortably. 92 points this season for them. Unfortunately, not good enough to win the Premier League title. Tottenham Hotspur needed to beat Norwich City. Uh, Son needed to score for them to then make it to the Champions League and for Son to win top scorer. Both happened in a 5 0 victory. All right, so there's that. Uh, they weren't the only ones to score five. <laughs> the team they were competing with, Tottenham Hotspur, were competing with Arsenal for the top four finish. Arsenal also scored five all right, but uh, wait, they won. They're playing in the Europa League next season. Take a look. The Gunners, 5-1. Amazing score. Um, Chelsea were also in action. It was Antonio Rudiger's last game. As a Chelsea player, they won 2-1 thanks to a winning goal from Ross Barkley. All right, so that's how Chelsea ended the season with a win. There were relegation places to be decided. Burnley and Leeds United were both in action. Burnley needed to avoid defeat, hope that Leeds United would get beaten. Well, let's begin with Burnley. They played at home to Newcastle and they lost that by two goals to one. Wow, Mike Jackson is taking them down. Very unfortunate. They tried, they tried, they tried every little thing. It didn't happen for them. But that actually bans handball, coach. That is unacceptable. <laughs> That's unacceptable. You're fighting relegation. You're, are you playing volleyball? How In stupid. the era of year. How stupid can you be? <laughs> what was uh, that? They lost. You are battling relegation. Why do you do that? I'm even shocked. In the era of year. Because even if they score. Of course you are going to be caught. Of course. You get caught. Well, Leeds United, they took full advantage. Uh, they were playing away from home against Brentford, and they made sure they won. Oh, what a story! <laughs> she has she Oh, my God! <laughs> Have you heard the least commentator? This is what football means to people. You know, look, Even the commentators. Look, well, listen to them. That is, why, to be really good. Huh? that is why it has to be played in a very fair manner. Very competitive very spirit. Very competitive spirit. Because it brings that natural response mm -hmm. from you. 
Yeah. If they had gotten relegated, the man we just heard scream <laughs> would have just gone cool <laughs> Did you hear the barely commentators? Oh my goodness. They sounded downtrodden. <laughs> Completely. Crest falling. Completely. Newcastle have taken the lead. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh, football. But, but what a story to bring an American coach to the yeah. English Premier Look, League, replace an experienced manager like Bielsa, and was, somehow he's managed to keep them it up. It's a huge risk. Yeah. And I'm sure they wouldn't want to get themselves in this position again. It's an opportunity they will have to embrace mm -hmm. and do things better next time. The, the, the football will have to change. The way they play their football, I'm referring to Leeds United mm -hmm. in particular. Overly expansive, too open at this level. You don't do that. Yeah. You don't put yourself in a situation where you've, you've got to score three, four goals every game yeah, to win to football win. games. It's, 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 it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. But, Fen, for it's me, um, this might be sentimental, but I think it's, for me, justice is saved in terms of respect. We knew what uh, Marcelo Bielsa did for this Leeds team. Yeah. Same thing as Sean Dyche. Leeds knew they needed to move on. They spoke with the manager, had that agreement, yeah, he understood came out the with a, a communique that said he had resigned. And then they brought in Jesse March. Burnley, after everything that Sean Dice did for them, decided to sack him. Disgrace him. Openly disgrace him. Get him out. They deserve what they got. For me, I'm, I'm really happy. It is justice. They deserve what they got. And I'm very happy that they went down, but it hasn't tainted Sean Dice's CV. And I'm going to take clean. quick comments from you guys on <laughs> the seasons of some of the teams. Um, Daniel, quick one on the season that Arsenal have had. Um, someone sent a message and he said that you predicted they will finish eighth, they finished fifth, and you owe them an apology. Uh, what, how would you describe Arsenal's season? Good? Decent? Okay? Great? Um, <laughs> honestly speaking, if you're an Arsenal fan and my prediction for the season is your, is your, your goal, then you are not serious. <laughs> if, if I say you finish seventh and you, you, you You're feel measuring like everything. You're measuring everything by what I say, then you are not serious. But look, for Arsenal standard, of course, fifth is not good enough. But if you look at how they started the season and the fact that they were within touching distance of top four, it would have been a very good season had that Newcastle result gone other ways. But yes, it's football. Um, Tottenham beat them to it. It's disappointing in the, the manner in which they lost it. But it's something to build on. But they need to, there's serious work need to, needs to be done. Because trust me, with Antonio Conte having a full season, Thomas Tuchel, Pep, Klopp, the gap between the top four and the fifth, I feel is going to be wider if the likes of Man United and Arsenal don't do some serious business in the transfer window to try and bridge that gap. So for Arsenal and Man, especially Arsenal, they need some, the serious work needs to be done. Because this team of kids is not going to compete for anything next season. Trust me, if they don't get some proper names in there, guys who can handle pressure, guys who can go into games, hold the game by the neck and, and get the results. I don't think they, will, they can compete next On season. United's season? Absolutely. I'm happy the season is over. It's quickly pass. Forget it's been, it's been a, it's been a, it's been bad. It's been, an, it's been a nightmare. A complete nightmare. It's been worse than a nightmare. It's been a nightmare where you wake up and you are still dreaming and you are waking up and you are still dreaming and still nightmare upon nightmare. But thankfully it's over. Um, on a personal side, yes, I'm happy that Cristiano Ronaldo scored the goals he scored. It just shows the class of the player. But aside that, there was absolutely yeah. nothing to celebrate as a Manchester United fan. It's, it's been you a want me to, to comment forget. on Ralph Reinick now? No, no, no. I want, I want you to make a quick comment on Chelsea's season. Um, it's been Mass a very... Massively disappointing. How so? Ah! They finished the season with two trophies. Chelsea won two trophies? They finished third. Uh, third. You said Chelsea won, won two trophies? They did. They won the Club World Cup in January. Oh, those are counted as last season trophies. No, right? that's not last season trophy. Don't well, do that. that it's last season, season trophy. Why, last why are you forcing this? It was, why it, are you it doing wasn't last played last trophy. season. It was played this season. <laughs> it was played. You, you got the image of what you did last season. If Chelsea had lost, you would have said Chelsea lost the final this season. Me, I, I, I consider the, the Premier League, Premier League FA Cup, FA Cup, 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 Champions, Champions League. as this season's trophy. Look, massively disappointed. Mm. Are you saying you are happy with the Chelsea season? I think it's been okay. okay. I think there's been so way be too many so be of it. the field distractions. Who distracted the team? I, I mean, <laughs> natural circumstances. Not like how? Vladimir Putin happened. Abramovich uh, should have spoken all to right. him. Let's talk about other champions. Um, in Italy, AC Milan have been crowned champions.
Uh, they won their last game and they had to do it on the last day of the season. And they did that by beating Sassiolo 3-0 to be crowned champions of Serie A. Wow, Serie A champions. Um, <laughs> Coach, they yeah. squeeze water out of rocks, basically. The squad isn't really that great. Is it, nobody gave them any chance of winning this, especially if you look at the quality of the other side of Milan. Yeah. Inter Milan. By far, player for player, yeah. Inter had the better team. Juve too. Juve had the better players. Juve not necessarily. Not though. necessarily. I think really? uh, 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 they are still paying for what the aftermath of Andre Pello. Yeah. So Allegri, yes, a very good manager. He came in, he tried to change, but the players had adapted to the Pelos way of doing things. They had a bad start to the season. They, they, they just couldn't recover. But I think Inter Milan will look back at the season and will be massively disappointed. They threw this or they gave the season. The, the manner in which this man, what's the name of the coach? Pioli. Pioli. The final Pioli. Yeah, the manner in which he's, he's gotten this group of players to believe. Very young team. Yeah. But the experienced one like Olivier Giroud and that boy, Rafael Leal. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. He, he's a class actor. He and Tomori. Yeah, Tomori, the midfielder. Been, oh, the, the chap in the number eight oh, shirt. God. I think they've been, yeah. they've been immense. Know. And for me, this is something that nobody saw coming. Yeah. And Paolo Mardini, who, who runs the show on a day-to-day -day basis, will be very, very proud very that happy indeed. Milan has won the league. Speaking about Milan, he has one of their former players, Mario Balotelli. Working wonders. Balotelli scored a goal to behold today. How many step are those? Seven. And then a Rabona. Oh, this is madness. boy. And this was no his fifth, way. This was his fifth goal in the Look game. Look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then that. Check what's, on to the left. Then a Rabona. What sort of Maguire-like defending is this? <laughs> <laughs> Coach, don't blame the defender. This is brilliant. No, but what? He's looking at his feet. He shouldn't be. This is, his eyes should was, be on the ball. That was boozing. <laughs> Just top on the ball. You're saying, you you saying that you could have defended that. Oh, Just, Just keep your eye on the ball and top on the ball. Why are you looking at this? Maguire-like sort of defender, man. <laughs> Uh, Coach Christopher, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure, thank you, Daniel. Uh, thank you, Daniel Kranting. Uh, thank you all for tuning in as well. It's been another brilliant episode of Scorecard, show produced by uh, Bo Esa S.A. Thank you, Bob, my director, NFI as well. You. Thank you all very much. It's been lovely <laughs> coming your way. Until next time, do take care and bye-bye.